seems like there's less danger now of losing knowledge. Everything's on the internet forever. God forbid I should forget how to do the Macarena or whatever, but it seems <laughs> seems more likely we will lose our sense of I'd reason. I'd like to see you do the Macarena, I have to say. You know what? I, I'm pretty sure it's it's out, out, over, over, cross, cross. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hip, hip, shake your <laughs> hips, right? I, I could, I'll have to Google it, but I can Google it. It's still there somewhere. Um I, we're more likely to lose our sense of reason, right? Because of misinformation or disinformation plus poor education. And that's kind of my worry. Less so with the new dark ages where, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but like the the Romans were living in concre concrete dwellings that they themselves couldn't build for like 700 more years. Europeans, because they were, that's right. There's, there's some knowledge that's lost. The Roman recipe for concrete uh, that was incredibly strong. They even had concrete that could... Um, could um, solidify underwater. They built these offshore piers with specialized concrete. And Europeans were living in Roman houses for 700 years, made out of materials and with techniques that they themselves did not know had been lost. There is knowledge that's lost. My very favorite is the Antikythera mechanism, this uh, clock-like device that was um, built by ancient Greeks over 2,000 years ago using complex metal gears, the likes of which were not seen again for 1,000 years. Wow. Uh, so. So there's a specialized knowledge. Uh, the other, another famous example of this is the purple dye, the technique for extracting purple dye from a certain kind of shellfish in, uh, that was available in North Africa. Again, uh, someone recently was able, after many years of effort, to reconstruct the recipe for making this purple dye, uh, which was a very elaborate process. So yes, yeah, so, so, so knowledge is sometimes lost. And, and you're right to suggest that now in the modern era, it might, might be harder to lose knowledge, but but not necessarily, uh, not for everyone and not always. For example, just think about, just think about the Y2K problem. Oh, right. Right. When, yeah. uh, when we were all struggling with Y2K, all of a sudden, all these, uh, Fortran programmers, the knowledge was lost that we couldn't find. These guys were brought out of retirement, paid huge wages to deal with these, uh, you know, this code code base that had been written decades earlier. And the knowledge was almost lost on how to deal with that code that was at, uh, you know, the basis of uh, many machines. Yeah, there was a programming language called like COBOL or something like COBOL, that. COBOL, I'm sorry, yeah. not Fortran, yeah. Yeah, it, I, well, you could be right. I think I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not super confident on that, on that bet. Yeah. Um, I was reading in, in Apollo Zero, I think it was, that when we shake hands, we often sniff our hand and we don't notice it. And, and that that might come from pre-humans and using smell to evaluate. And I noticed... Well, I didn't notice. Somebody told me, my, an ex-girlfriend told me that after I shake hands, I often touch my nose. And I try not to now, but she noticed it. She goes, you always do that. You always shake hands and then you do that. Like one finger on the nose. She noticed, she noticed this before you read about it in the book? In oh, words, yeah. This is this is like 15 years ago she noticed so this then, habit that so I did. So I vindicated your former girlfriend, in other yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. I, she thought I had like a nervous tick. And I thought, oh, maybe, uh, but I, I'm not nervous. I don't really understand yeah. what it's for. So I didn't know it was a primal thing that a lot of people do. Yes, apparently, according at least to some studies. And um, and uh, uh, chimpanzees do something similar. So there is a sense in which we don't, you know, human beings, culturally, we don't sniff each other. In other words, it would not be considered normal behavior when you encounter a stranger to sniff them, you know, like dogs do, for example. That would be odd. Uh, and so we, but a certain other so chimpanzees do that. And we... We apparently, uh, it is claimed through this um, surreptitious observation of human beings done by these other scientists that, um, you know, that we smell our hands after we shake hands with other people. And that's a way of assessing the olfactory, um, you know, sampling the olfaction, olfactory signals of, of other people. If you like that clip and you want to see more just like this, subscribe to our channel for more or click on the videos on screen now. To see full-length episodes, check out our main channel in the description below.